This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. Uh -huh. Now, we've already smacked down the Microsoft Surface Pro 4 with the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, but now we're throwing in the new kit on the block, which is the Samsung Galaxy Book 12 inch. Now, that's also available in a 10.6 inch size, that Galaxy Book, but it's kind of a different deal there because you don't get the OLED screen and you get a Core M3 instead of a Core i5. So, different sort of animal, but keep in mind that with those compromises that's available there as well. Obviously with the Surface Pro 4, one size is one size is one size. It's always gonna be this size, it's always gonna be this shape until they reinvented a Surface Pro 5. For those of you who haven't been following the news or our five minutes on tech series, Panos Panay, the head of Surface Products, recently said there's no such thing as a Surface Pro 5 right now. We're not on that because not until they can make enough changes to the device, which includes battery life, form factor, lots of things, not just a CPU refresh, will there be a Surface Pro 5? That said, we probably will see Surface Pro 4 refresh just to put the KB Lake CPU in the current Intel 7th generation. Other than that, nothing will change. So the SmackDown should stand as being relevant for a while. I <laughs> Apple's had the iPad Pro out for quite some time since November 2015, and they still haven't seen fit to refresh it. Who knows when? Probably they'll get a faster CPU inside, and uh, nobody knows exactly what else would change there, but probably most of this will hold true. Galaxy Book obviously is the new kid on the block, and it follows up from the Tab Pro S. That's a, kind of a better name. So it competes most directly with Surface Pro 4. Why? Because it runs Windows 10, so just like the Surface Pro series. So for those of you who need Windows Desktop, and you know you need it, well, obviously it's going to be between the Surface Book and the Galaxy Book. 12, I mean Surface Pro 4 rather, and the Galaxy Book. Uh, the iPad runs iOS. So for those of you who are okay with the mobile S, that's an alternative. So let's talk about that because that's the most important thing when you try and decide between any of these, whether you use them for note taking, art, or other things. First off, iOS. The good point is, and I love it for this, I admit, and I use it a lot for art and for some writing and stuff like that too. You just pick it up and you Turn it on and it's ready to go. There's no, oh, look, there's some Windows updates. Oh, look, there's some driver updates. Oh, look, there's some driver updates that went wrong. Oh, gee, goodness, look at that. My Adobe subscription needs to go online to check to make sure that I still have a valid subscription before I can use the Photoshop program and start drawing or something like that. So you get the idea. This is really turnkey. You've got the MS Office suite here. You don't get every single feature that you get on the desktop version. For, for my purposes, for doing written reviews, that sort of thing, it's absolutely fine. You, you get most of the features that folks use there. But if you need fancy stuff like table of, content, table of contents, indices, all that sort of thing in Word, then you're looking back at the desktop version. Excel, fine on here. Excel, if you're going to be doing mad spreadsheets that have lots of pivots going on and hundreds of thousands of rows and calculations, then you're back looking at Windows to do something more advanced. If you're talking about note taking, these are all just fine. There's OneNote, there's Evernote for the iPad. Again, you have that here and the Apple Pencil is a superb writing experience. So I would put them pretty much on par when it comes to that, especially given the fact you can sync with all sorts of cloud note taking applications. Syncing. The brouhaha, the big problem, the thing that annoys me about the iPad often enough is that you don't have access to the file system. So copying files around, which is something that's everyday, normal, easy peasy on these Windows products, ain't so much on an iPad. That said, whereas a year ago I just wanted to scream half the time just trying to get art from Procreate into something else and having to use Dropbox, which isn't my favorite cloud experience anymore, things have changed. Many programs on iOS now have pretty seamless cloud integration, whether it's going to be iCloud or it's going to be Microsoft's OneDrive, Dropbox is still there. So it's become less painful, it's become less of a sticking point for me. If you want desktop applications and you know you need them though, then obviously you're back here because yes, there's Photoshop for the iPad. No, it is nothing like Photoshop on the desktop. Uh, the support for many layers for all sorts of fancy stuff that we do in Photoshop every day beyond, you know, your normal sketching and a couple of layers and all that sort of thing. Yeah, if you're a, if you're a photographer, then really still, you know, you, you need a desktop running full Photoshop. There is Photoshop for this and it's a fine sketching program. I'm sure I'll get more features uh, for art people. Procreate is usually the go-to and it has a lot of features, more than you would realize because the UI is, well, mostly hidden so that you have more screen real estate to work with, but you've got layers, you've got the ability to import images and control their opacity. So for those of you who are doing matte painting and you need to bring in a grass texture, you can do that. I still find it to be simpler, more straightforward here. So 
my workflow for art actually is I start almost every painting, digital painting that I do on the iPad because it's so easy to just pick up, start sketching. Pen experience is fantastic. When I get to a certain point, I just about always bring it into Photoshop on another device though to do all the advanced stuff that is just easier to do more quickly in Photoshop, more streamlined. So how about fan noise? I know in my Galaxy Book 12 inch review I didn't mention fan noise much because yes it has a fan. No you almost never hear it when you do. It's very soft and very quiet. It'd be really really pushing it crazy hard. You get a hot spot top center area where you generally wouldn't be touching it even if you're holding it like a tablet. Surface Pro, Pro 4 is noisier. It's usually not a vacuum cleaner but you'll hear the fan more and it is more audible when it comes on. But I guess it's not terrible but the Galaxy Book's nearly silent. Obviously the iPad is completely silent. There's no fan. There's that. If you need LTE, the Galaxy Book is available in a Verizon version. Unfortunately you have to go with the 4 gig of RAM, 128 gig SSD configuration. There's no 8 gig, 256 gig version like there is for just the Wi-Fi only version, at least right now. Uh, the good news is though, the Verizon version is unlocked because the FCC told Verizon if you're going to have so much spectrum, you're going to have to have unlocked devices. So it works with an AT&T SIM. I tested it. It doesn't work with a T-Mobile SIM. Obviously the iPad is available on all carriers and it's unlocked. So you just put the SIM in there, you go with the carrier that you want. And Surface Pro 4 still has no LTE option, so it's going to be tethering if you want to. You know, using the Wi-Fi hotspot feature on your phone or if you still happen to have a portable hotspot using that sort of thing. When it comes to the display, you're looking at three of the nicest displays you're ever going to see on mobile OS products. The IGZO display on the Surface Pro 4 is really lovely. The Retina display on the iPad is currently fantastic and the only thing that kind of bests it is the 9.7 inch iPad Pro which is even a little bit more vivid with that P3 color gamut coverage. It's probably something we'll see in the next generation iPad Pro 12 inch. But that Samsung Galaxy Book 12 inch with that OLED display, I mean that one's kind of a showstopper. The colors are so vivid and it has such a wide color gamut compared to the other two that yeah, it's just hmm. The only challenge I find is if you're doing something for production work, you have to actually be careful if you're doing for content consumption on the web your, your stuff because you're going to see more vivid colors than most of your viewers on web-based products will ever see. The Galaxy Book is the lowest resolution though, but it's also the smallest screen. Granted, it's not much smaller than Surface Pro 4, but the 12.9 inch iPad Pro has the biggest screen. So you got 2160 by 1440 on your Galaxy Book 12 inch versus 2736 by 1824 on Surface Pro 4 versus 2732 by 2048 on the iPad Pro. So 216 PPI on the Galaxy, 267 PPI on the Surface Pro 4, 264 on the iPad. So the, in terms of uh, resolution, really the iPad and the Surface Pro 4 are obviously the closest. That said, these are also very high resolution, resolution devices and there is no way you, know, you can see individual pixels on that Galaxy Book. So I'm okay with it. Battery life? Well, neither the Galaxy Book 12 inch nor the Surface Pro 4 are the proverbial, proverbial energizer bunnies. These are not going to run for 12 hours and their manufacturers don't claim they will either. They're both six and a half hour devices, six hour devices for light to moderate work, not heavy duty work. Um, you, you, although sketching in Photoshop really you can hit six hours easily with either of these two with brightness set to something like 35 to 40 percent. Given how bright all any and all of these displays are, that's very adequate. Here's where the mobile OS with the mobile OS oriented CPU really pulls ahead. Apple claims nine hours and as usual with Apple they're accurate. So you get longer run times on the iPad Pro. Galaxy Book 12 inch fights back. It supports adaptive fast charging much like Galaxy phones are fast charging devices and that can really help as you can bring that charge up very quickly again. The iPad Pro is the slowest charging. It's really slow. Uh, but there's a pro tip here. If you want to go pick up a 12 inch MacBook charger, use that instead. It's perfectly safe. You can. It'll charge a lot faster. But still not as fast as that Galaxy Book. But about as fast as Surface Pro 4 at least at that point. Or a little bit faster. You know when it comes to tablet speakers, usually none of them sound good. In this case they all sound much better than average. So sound quality and volume on these is actually very good and pretty enjoyable for doing like something like watching a movie. Stereo speakers on the Surface Pro 4 and the Galaxy Book 12 inch. Quad speakers on the iPad. So 
there you have that. When it comes to the actual, the physical design of these things, obviously the iPad is sold first and foremost as a tablet. Apple has an accessory keyboard that's 160 bucks. There are third party keyboards, you know, with Apple, there's always a healthy ecosystem of accessories, even for something a little bit more niche, like a big iPad here. No keyboard in the box, no pen in the box. The pen's $99. Mm. Surface Pro 4, of course, they always make a big deal about the fact they include the pen in the box. They don't include the keyboard in the box. That's $130. So Galaxy Book has the pen, has the keyboard in the box. It's priced the same as the competing Surface Pro 4 with the keyboard thrown in. So. Core i5 only, two configurations of the Core i5 here. And if you want a Core i7, if you know you need a Core i7, if you need more than eight gigs of RAM, which is 16 in the case of Surface Pro 4, only Surface Pro 4 will do that for you. Samsung hasn't released a configuration like that. Probably they won't. Build quality and all these metal casings, very nicely built, very nice, very premium looking products. Uh, the, the kickstand, I think, on the Surface Pro 4 is still the most ingenious and the most serviceable design for a variety of uses, from using it as a laptop to using it as a tablet for note-taking or drawing. It's pretty darn sturdy. It does dig into your legs a little bit, but it would be my favorite. And I like the way that it sets the keyboard up at an angle. I also prefer this keyboard a little bit. Even though the Galaxy Books isn't bad and it's backlit too, it's always flat on the table, feels a little less comfy, and it's that folio design right here. So, you know, this kind of compromises a little less stability, a little bit less versatility on the number of positions you can put it in. There, there are several. I mean, you're not stuck to one, for example. There you go. But I would say overall, as a useful computer surrogate, the Surface Pro 4 still wins on ergonomics. And since I just alluded to pricing, the Galaxy Book, book starts at 1129 for 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. The Surface Pro 4, with that configuration and the keyboard, it's priced about the same, also around $1129 if you throw in the keyboard. It's $999, $130 for the keyboard. iPad starts at $799, the 12.9 inch, so it's actually the cheapest thing here. But once you throw in a keyboard, if you're looking for a computer replacement, once you throw in the $100 Apple Pencil, it's getting up there just about in the same price range, too. So there you have it. You're not really saving a lot of money by going to the iPad if you know you're going to want all of those accessories. At, from a pure pen standpoint, since all these are very pen-centric products, it's a tie for me between the excellent Wacom EMR latest generation on the Galaxy Book 12 and the iPad Pro. They're both wonderful. There is no parallax, very fast response times, great pressure levels. They're both really enjoyable. And Surface Pro 4 with its Entrig technology, and you know, I've seen a few Entrig devices that have gotten a little bit better, so may have been slight improvements there, but it doesn't have as good palm rejection. So I tend to get a lot more stray marks on the screen when I'm writing. So, and there's no tilt, which you do get on the Galaxy Book 12 and on the iPad Pro, which is something that's important to artists, less so to note takers. So not that the Surface Pro 4 is terrible for note taking, but probably more for you art people, it would be the lesser choice among these in terms of pen responsiveness and features.